Hello, this webinar is a part of a multi-part series on National Constitution Commencement Day. This webinar focuses on a sermon of the commencement of the New Hampshire Constitution of June 3, 1784, and it's representative of the atmosphere of civic thinking that existed in the country even at the time of the uh, adoption of the National Constitution. Now remember, there were 13 constitutions in place before the federal constitution was adopted. Uh, each time these state constitutions were commenced, a sermon was preached in the state house. And in this case, this sermon was preached five years before U.S. Constitution Commencement Day. Remember that it was preached in the state house with all the elected officials present. It was later published for the citizens to read and the elected officials to contemplate. And this was commonly done with these Commencement Day sermons. And it sets the atmosphere for understanding our U.S. Constitution. You can get a copy of this full sermon at ChristianCivicsTraining.org. What I will highlight is in the next four minutes, I will highlight themes that are raised by Reverend Samuel McClintock in his 50-minute Constitution Commencement Day sermon. So I bring you Reverend Samuel McClintock and his themes. We praise God publicly for the great things he's done for us. We praise God for the framing of our Constitution for ourselves and our posterity. God has imprinted on our hearts the knowledge of his existence and his governing in the affairs of the world. Men of pride who say there is no God believe this to be superstitious. Men who are convinced of this truth of the scriptures we just looked at see this as a most rational act. The Jewish nation renounced their dependence on God and confided in their own strength. God sends messengers and messages to warn nations that are disregarding him. God changes and varies the conduct of his providence toward nations according to their moral character. If God builds a nation by his divine providence and the people disregard his ways, then he will withdraw from them the tokens of his favor and withhold blessings he was ready to bestow. Blessings come to a nation who follow him. Sufferings come to a nation who disregard him. Even the methods they take to support their tottering state serve to precipitate their ruin. God shows a model of how he deals with nations in the example of the Hebrew Republic. God's activity is behind the scenes, and we're apt to overlook it. These common and ordinary events are part of God's blessing or chastising and equal to the miracles he has performed. God guides the hearts, thoughts, minds of men. God uses wicked nations to discipline and chastise his chosen people. God has shown himself mighty in the American Revolution. People who cannot see this are so hard of heart, they would not have been persuaded by the plagues of Egypt or the parting of the Red Sea. The American victory was equal to David's victory over Goliath. God guided us like he guided the stone from David's sling. Four excellent qualities exist in our Constitution. The protection of life, liberty, and property, rights of conscience, checks on power, and impartial justice. Praying that God provides protection and wisdom for the new governor is important. America is destined for greatness if they take advantage of their freedom and operate with freedom and virtue. Each state is a republic, an experiment in liberty. Righteousness exalts a nation. God judges individuals for their actions in a future state of rewards. God judges nations in the here and now as a nation does not have a soul. All of history points to this truth. Public virtue makes a people great and happy, vice contemptible and miserable. For free nations, their very existence is dependent upon public virtue. Citizens who love freedom must do everything in their power to promote public virtue. Leaders are especially responsible for public virtue. Rulers, by their very design of their institution, are ministers of God for good to the people. Christianity is the firmest support of freedom in civil government. Leaders that disregard or degrade Christianity saw off the very branch they stand on for authority. If citizens have no regard for God, they will have no regard for man. Christianity will make the best rulers and best citizens. Virtue should be affirmed by all, both the religious and non-religious. Government should be a terror to evildoers and a praise to those that do well. This is straight out of scripture. Civil leaders should do everything in their power to encourage public virtues, that of industry, economy, frugality, obedience, and reverence to oaths. Civil leaders should do everything in their power to stamp out vice. Education in wisdom, virtue, and usefulness is the essential lifeblood of a free republic. 
Ignorant, virtuous people are easily deceived and are led by their feelings and are dangerous to a free society. Ignorant, virtuous people can be agitated, controlled, and moved to outrage. Future generations rely on the vir virtue of this generation. Public debt is the destruction of many nations. Public debt makes a nation a laughing stock to others. Think of the greater good of the country. Watch out for designing selfish men. Government is designed by God for a purpose, to restrain evil and to encourage good. God directs the affairs of nations. May our lives and our nation be built on this cornerstone. May we execute our responsibility as stewards. Those are the summary thoughts of Rev. Samuel McClintock and his New Hampshire Constitution Commencement Day Sermon, a challenge to pastors and clergy and Christian leaders for finding our voice again in the civil space. If you've not watched the other Constitutional Commencement Day Sermon yet by Samuel, uh, Rev. Samuel Cooper, I invite you to do so. My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.